show today. I'm Tamar Abu Hantash, and I'm sitting next to an incredible man, George Gilbert. Welcome, George. How are you doing? I'm great, Tamara. Thank you for that nice introduction. Oh, you're welcome. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. How? Where, where do you come from? <laughs> I actually come from a show business family. My parents were a comedy team and they worked all over. They toured with legends like Frank Sinatra, Jack Benny, Bob Hope. And so I grew up backstage. My parents threw oh. me on stage at age 12 doing oh. stand-up comedy. And then in 1998, I transitioned from stand-up comic to motivational humorist. And now I am an executive speech coach. Wow, that, that's a lot of transitioning. So how, how how did you, how did you, uh, huh, huh, hmm. <laughs> stop it, uh. <laughs> How did I make the transition? Yeah, so that's a lot of transitioning to different areas of speaking. They're all related, whether it's stand-up comic, speaker or executive speech coach, you have to have the basics. You have to know how to communicate with your audience. Mm -hmm. And so everything that I do is a passion within me. And right now, helping others communicate how to communicate in front of an audience is one of my biggest passions. Awesome. So you've had much success in communicating with your audience, correct? Absolutely. Well, you know what it takes is just communicate, 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 because as polished as I look, there are times, especially when I was getting started, that I died on stage. Mm -hmm. But the key is to not give up, learn from your mistakes, and move on. That's very true. We've all had those moments, especially starting out, where we feel like we're so bad that we just want to give up, right? Absolutely. So how are you able to overcome that and keep going? Well, I had great mentors, not only my parents, but we had a comedian named Don Rice III, and he used to tease me, have you overcome flop sweat? And he'd say, you know, in order to be a success, you have to overcome flop sweat. Mm -hmm. Now, a flop set is breaking out into that cold sweat yeah. when the audience is just sitting there and not laughing, not applauding, and you just want to run off mm -hmm. the stage and not get back up there but he said the key is to get back up there and do it again and again and again until you get better at it definitely I love that you also mentioned your parents growing up with show business parents how was that it's something that we've never many of us have not experienced I thought it was normal but I had the greatest childhood ever I mean one year we had the entire cast of Ronan Martin's laughing over for Christmas Eve now people don't know who Ronan Martin's laughing but in 1968 or 69 when they came over they were the number one comedy variety show on television mm -hmm. of all television at that time and so it was just natural to have these people over here in fact there was a, a doorbell rang that night and I answered the door and it was to me one of the biggest movie stars of the era mm -hmm. because I just saw him the week before at what they call the Huntridge Theater here in town many many years ago in the love bug and it was it was <clears throat> Buddy Hackett and he was at our door crashing the party so <laughs> that was the kind of fun exciting childhood that I had Awesome. So on top of uh, Buddy Hackett, who else did you look up to when you were starting out and throughout your <laughs> transitioning? Well, I wouldn't really say I looked up to Buddy Hackett because he did what they call blue humor, mm -hmm. and that was dirty jokes, and uh, he even had to be escorted home, but that's another story. <laughs> but the ones that I looked up to may not have been household names like Don Rice III, uh, Freeman Love, of course my parents, mm -hmm. but I also looked up to some of those great comedians. I remember getting to meet uh, George Burns backstage at the Sands, or Henny Youngman, or all these different old comedians, and they all brought something different mm -hmm. to the stage. And that's what I loved, is that no two comedians were the same. They all brought their own personality. So, no two comedians are the same. So how would you say that you are different from others? Well, I was different when I first started because mm -hmm. I was the only 12-year-old doing stand-up comedy. <laughs> then I had to learn to deliver. I couldn't, mm -hmm. as I got older and lost that cuteness or something I never had, I had to learn to deliver and write my own jokes. Mm -hmm. So you bring your own personality into whatever it is you do, mm -hmm. whether it's stand-up comedy, speaking, or, and that's one of my partner and, and my goals with our executive speech coaching, coaching Al Jensen and I, we try to bring out the person's 
that we're working mm -hmm. with personality. Definitely. Yes. <sighs> I had a question. <laughs> and so when we do that, we help to uh, bring out their personality so that they can engage the audience. If they're trying to be something they're not, they're going to come off as phony or fake, and the audience isn't going to buy it. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring out their personality. We have to find exactly what their core message is. Some will mm -hmm. come to us and say, hey, I want to be a motivational speaker. Well, what? does that really mean? Yeah. We need to know what their core message is so that we can help them so that they have a better understanding of what their goal is as a mm -hmm. speaker. Definitely. And that's definitely like the starting point of becoming a speaker is finding out your core message. Can you go, give us a little bit of a tip on how we can get started on finding our core message? Well, to me, core message is kind of like writing out your goal. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to share with the audience? So you have to figure out what your message is. You have to be able to define it and in a very short Length. You don't mm -hmm. want uh, pages of it. It can be defined in one or two sentences so that it is exact and mm -hmm. you know every time that you get up in front of the audience what your goal is with the audience. Now, your content may change, but that core message needs to be the same so that you are consistent in front of your audience. Definitely. And you mentioned that you and your partner, Al Jensen, are coaching speakers on finding their core message, correct? Yes. Is there anything else that you coach them on? We coach them on their core message, their how to deliver their story, mm -hmm. write their story. We call them chunks. Mm -hmm. And to try and do an hour and 15 minutes or even a 45 minute speech, it's so hard to write. But if you break it down into several chunks with your story, with what the lesson is from that story, and their takeaway from that story. That helps them to move on so that they can have several chunks. And so if they go to different audiences or come back to another audience, they know that they've done these three chunks, they need to do another three chunks for that presentation. Definitely. Uh, when Have you ever taken a client that you thought had no hope, but you were able to make them shine? Oh, absolutely. It takes work, but the, mm -hmm. the client has to do a lot of the work. Mm -hmm. We can give you the tools, but the client has to do the work. Definitely. They have to go out there and write that presentation. They have to go out there and deliver that presentation. Mm -hmm. Without writing it and delivering it over and over and over again, mm -hmm. we're ineffective. Correct. But if they work towards their goal mm -hmm. of becoming a professional speaker, we can help them. Definitely. Awesome. How are we able to get your help if we need it? Oh, absolutely. You can go to nextstagespeaking.com. You can contact Al Jensen at Al, Jens, Al at aljensen.com or George at originallyspeaking.com or call 702-682-8431. That's 702-682-8431. Thank you, George. Thank you so much for that information. And I definitely hope everybody got some value and will use your service if they need it. Thank you, Tamara. Bye. Bye. <laughs>